Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jumping in an Elevator, the podcast where I full stop. Oh, quick message from our sponsor. But had I accepted the pickle juice, I would be drinking pickle juice right now. Thank you, Nikki, for your input in today's podcast episode. Special shout out to one of my top tier patrons, Charlie. Thank you for your support. And shout out to the Patreonites. You know who you are. Um, in episodes 1 to 50, what I would do is for the person that got the shout out of the episode, I would give a message of goodwill or like a wish. Bad news. I'm out of goodwill. I've got nothing left to say. That's positive. You know what I mean? Just like I've run out. The well is dry. I've done all my good wishes, right? The well wishing is done. So what we're doing now is music suggestions. So Charlie, I'm suggesting that you stream Ava Max, Heaven and Hell. Yes, I'm holding up my Ava Max vinyl for those that are listening and can't see. That counts as my Ava Max PR for the week. As you know, I'm basically on her payroll at this point because I'm a maxi pad. Like you have to like help her, <laughs> help her. Oh gosh, it annoys me so much when like the flops on TikTok are like, Ava Max is a flop. I'm like, okay, check the spreadsheet. 35 million streams monthly on Spotify and that's flop. Or 35 million listeners, not even streams, because you know the girls are listening twice. That's 70 million streams per month, exactly. Um, if you're wondering what was happening before with the sounds of Nikki, I have a soundboard now. And that will really increase my level of annoying. So this is just a warning that from here on in, I will be even more insufferable. But also, wow, it's going to allow us to become so much closer because instead of me hearing these things in my head, I can now improve your experience by letting you hear them too. For example, get in the cage for 10 minutes. Get in the cage for 10 minutes. That's when Gemma's talking to Steph in Big Brother and Gemma's supposed to get in the cage. This is prior to, I'm claustrophobic, Darren. Steph says that to Gemma. Get in the cage for 10 minutes. Get in the cage for 10 minutes. How are we all? Ah, oh, what a time to be existing, right? And I'm not talking about everything that's happening in the world. I'm talking about the Pretty Little Lies series. Uh, yes, the PLL series is the reason why the podcast took a little bit of a break because it was just, it was a lot of work, basically. Like, I had every intention to continue doing the podcast, but then the, like, Pretty Little Lies videos just took so long. So I pretty much just didn't have time to do the podcast. It's not because I didn't want to do it. Um, but what do we think about those videos? They recently went six times platinum. Yes. I've decided to start tweeting about myself like I'm my own like chart data account. So I tweeted something like Mike's Mike chart update, uh, new certification, six times platinum for the PLL series. And it's true, like six million views on the series. Three million on number one, two million on number two, one million on number three. Exactly. Let me sip this drink with another message from Nikki. Word. Get off my phone. Noun. Definition. A swift dismissal of a stupid ass phone call or comment. Exactly. Um, I personally just got boostianed in my left arm. And I got really sick after the first one. So I'm anticipating sickness this time. I think I had six hours before it got bad for me. <laughs> it was bad for me. Uh, so I'm anticipating in a few hours that I'm just going to be a mess, babe. A mess, literally. But go and get vaccinated. Literally, like... Also stream Ever Max Heaven and Hell. Those two things are equivalent. Um, so yeah, Pretty Little Lies series. They were about a month of work each per video. Um, we finished it. And I have started working on the next thing I'm not gonna say what it is until I have a concrete idea there's like a few things that I'm kind of tossing up in the air right now like I don't want to say it's one thing get the girls excited and then pull the rug from underneath you actually speaking of rugs everyone's always replying to my Instagram story like where'd you get your rug where's the rug from blah 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 babe I just googled swirly rug and I just clicked whatever came up first I'm resourceful like what can I say uh, what else has happened in the last three months? I got verified on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I had a little bit of a revelation when I got verified on TikTok. I realized that people will just follow you. 
if you had that little blue tick. And doesn't that just say a lot about the global financial crisis of 2009? You know what I mean? As soon as I got that blue tick, people were just like following. For what? I was like, I haven't even done anything. Why are you following me? But I mean, I'll take it. Um, also, if you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, why am I seeing so much on my screen right now? It's because I'm using my wide angle lens. I bought this for the Pretty Little Liars number three because the chart got too big and I'm obsessed with how far away I am from the camera. Like I was born to be far away from the camera. Mm, I'm loving how like I have several, like several a blemish on my face right now and you can't see them. And that's such a blessing to me. But I will let you all know that I am in fact wearing my Rina Sawayama limited edition hat because that's actually quite important and I don't want that to slide under the radar. Next thing, I got declined verification on Instagram for the 17,000th time. That was fun. Very humbling, very humbling exercise, which is why I do it. I do it to keep grounded, remember where I came from, right? Um, I turned 26. That was actually disastrous. I need a sound effect for that. What the fuck do you do when you turn 26? Like, that's so boring. Like, 25 at least is a square number. 26 is what? 2 times 13? Like, that's so... Flop. At least 27 is 3 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, so it's 3 cubed. That's fun. For the power of 3. What's 26? 2 times 13? That's kind of embarrassing if you really think about it. Like... Anyway. Ugh. Um, yeah, Sunday was a bit of a mess. Sunday, hello, December. Whoa, why did my brain do that? I was trying to think December and I said Sunday. What happened on Sunday that I just mentally had to say it was a mess? Bitch, all I did on Sunday was scoot. There's a new electric scooters around Melbourne and I love to scoot. Like I just be scooting around. Like you just rent it, you go up to it, scan it and you can just zoom around. If you see me on a scooter, don't yell out my name. I'll run you over. That's it. Like I, I can't help it. It's just what I do right um these scooters go up to 24 kilometers per hour because i think it's about 25 they have to register as like a special vehicle or something so you have to get a license special license and it has to be registered but then if it's just under 24 then you don't have to do that so i think that's why they've done that someone told me that and i believed it so um but yeah i love to scoot catch me in the bike lane near you um it's very empowering it is, it is, to be scooting past all the expensive cars stuck at lights. And I'm just like, bye, bitch, see you never. Exactly. But I don't think I'm in a position in my life where I need to be buying a scooter. I'm happy with just renting. I am, however, getting bored of renting an apartment. Let's talk about that, Charles Gross voice. So mm. let's talk about it. Tell me why my rent went up. For what? I got an email being like, the rent's going up because the other apartments in the building that are being listed now are more than what you're paying. Like, that's my problem. Sorry. God. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for an apartment because I realised, I was like, well, I didn't realise my sister's been basically yelling at me through any form of communication possible that instead of paying someone else's mortgage via rent, I could be paying off my own mortgage. It's a whole thing. Um, so I've been looking at apartments, basically. And I've also been looking at renting other apartments because I'm not in a position to buy right now, maybe like in a, a year or something. So I've been looking at other apartments, basically, for renting and purchasing. And first of all, what the fuck? Like, I'll scroll. I love to scroll. <laughs> I love the train. I love the real estate website. I love to have a little scroll and then, you know, you find something and you're oblivious to the price when you click into it. You're like, oh, pff, let me just view these images. And you're like, wow, this place is nice. Look at the price, $2 million. Can I live? Can I live? Who the fuck is buying these? What's that about? Who's buying the properties if they're that expensive? Does everyone just have a mortgage? And I know the girls be having mortgages. I know several a girly with a mortgage. But damn, like, ugh. 
And I thought, okay, maybe I'm just broke with expensive taste as Ali Banks' album tease. No. I googled apparently the median house price in Melbourne is a million dollars. Cool. So I guess it's fuck single people, right? There's only one income stream. I mean, that's a lie. There's more than one income stream, but I mean one income household is me. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I should be dating explicitly for another income stream to buy an apartment. That sounds bad, but babe, that's the truth of the world that we live in, right? Like... Shut your mouth, because she's mugging you left, right and centre. Like, what do you want me to say? This is how things work. Um, but this apartment's good. Like, I'm, I'm okay with this apartment. You know, the carpet, I've discussed it many times on this podcast. Fuck the carpet. Fuck the carpet. If I see carpet in an apartment... No! I'm not doing it. Sorry, like... Get that fire exit door. I'm off. It's just... No. This carpet is so evil. It's just in my lungs every day. I bought a Dyson vacuum cleaner so that I could suck up every fucking fibre. Still carpet. Like, where is it coming from? This carpet is so clean. And yeah, it's just like in my moisturizer. Like I open the moisturizer, the carpet fiber in the moisturizer. What the fuck is going on? It's a piss take. You're all taking the piss out of me. So yeah, I guess that's all of my updates. Um, checking my notes. Oh, I gained like 150,000 subscribers because of the Pretty Little Liars series, which was cool. Um, also wrote down, <laughs> I've been in a very bad mood and I have very bitter vibes all of 2022. What's that about? I think I just woke up on January 1st mad. <laughs> and I've been mad since. And it's not like anything in particular has happened. It's just, I'm just baseline annoyed. Just baseline pissed off at everything. I always start, I tweeted out that I always start at plus two annoyed points. And it's hard to go below plus two annoyed points. Oh, it's bad. Like, I, I think I woke up the other day, like, grinding my teeth. And I was like, what for? What's the issue? Like, you've been through worse stuff. There's just... <laughs> Fucking calm down. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that serious. God, my body's being so dramatic. Uh, what else? Oh, I have a lip scar. I gave myself a chemical burn. Yeah, that was fun. So, basically, what happened was... I used this stuff called Effaclar... Um, I think it's by La Roche-Posay. It's really cheap. And what it does is when you have a pimple, it dries it out. So I put it on like before I go to bed and then I wake up and it's like dried out. But I had a pimple on my lip and I picked it. Can we not talk about it? Giving very much Dr. Pimple Popper realness. I, I popped the pimple and I was like, she's not done. There's still stuff in there. So I put Effaclar on it. Bad fucking news. It stung so badly because I fucking chemically burned myself. That's why it stung so bad. So rule number one to be a boss ass bitch. Don't put Everclar on your lips. And number two, don't put Everclar on an open wound because you will regret it. I still have like the, the scar on my lip and that was like a few weeks ago. So as Adele once said, live and let die. Did she say that? She definitely didn't say that, but whatever. Um, next thing, Oreos and milk. We need to talk about Oreos and milk. Uh, I talked about this in recent YouTube video, and I also had like a little bit of an episode on Twitter where I tweeted this every two to three business minutes. Uh, but Oreos and milk, let's talk about it. I've put the image on the screen, but I'll give you a um, audio version. Christine Aguilera tweeted this. Her username is at Xtina. She tweeted this on the 9th of... No, she didn't. I was going to say on the 9th of the 15th, 2018. That's absolutely incorrect. On the 15th of September, 2018 at 12.20pm. Just like lunchtime thoughts. This tweet has one like. She tweeted, Oreos and milk. Dot, 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 smiley face. Now, the number of dots is actually very important. Don't forget it. It's initially four dots, smiley face. Then someone replied, Monsef replied and said, how decadent, heart, eyes, face, one like, one reply. The reply is Christina Aguilera. It was good too. Dip the Oreos in the milk, smiley face. One reply, one like. OMG, I've never done that. I'm going to try that. 
one like, one reply. What? It's really good. It makes the cookie all soft and it's just good. Now, at face value, you might be like, why am I looking at this? Why is he talking about this? It's so important. And if you can't recognize that, babe, like, we can't be friends, right? The Oya's discourse is just, I think it's because it's so relatable, right? I've had so many conversations like this where it's like five messages. It's a three verse two, just about fucking nothing. It goes nowhere. How are you? Good, good. How are you? What have you been up to? Not much. You? Yeah, not much. There you go. <laughs> it's the Oreos and milk effect. Um, also, I tweeted this in like 17,000 different formats. I did Morse code, hexadecimal. It was a lot of fun. I don't know if the girls on Twitter thought it was fun. Bitch, I run this ship. It's my rules. Do I have a sound effect for that? Yeah, I do. Miss Arya, you're a killer, not Ezra's wife. Like, sorry. Also, I'm sure you can hear those noises outside my apartment. Like, for what? Why are you making that much fucking noise? Oh my god, group text, guys. Would you like a sedative? Yeah, I fucking would. Thanks, Spencer. Ugh. I can already tell some people are mad at me using the soundboard, but I need to do what I need to do. Thanks. <laughs> Next item on the list, new music. Um, so the last few months we've had some absolute bangers coming out. I want to go through my liked songs because liked songs is where I just put everything. Basically, like I have playlists and I update them, but liked songs is where the stuff that for me, that's the moment. Okay, we're going to go in reverse chronological. So starting with the most recent song that I've added. Honest by Peking Duck Feet Slater. It's very Icona Pop Lady Gaga Charlie XCX vibes. So I would suggest going to listen to that if you haven't already. Do we have a problem? Nikki and Lil Baby. Initially, I listened to this and I was like, I don't know if this is for me. Which is disastrous. Because I'm a barb through and through. But then I listen to it a few hundred times and like, I get it now. I get it. Like, I love the song. It's so good. Also, I love the end of the music video when she teased her next single, Bussin. I love the continuity. I love the cinematic universe vibes when they do that shit. Who else does that? I feel like Gaga, there's a, is it Telephone? Telephone music video when they're all listening to Bad Romance through their, uh, Beats earphones <laughs> at the start of the telephone music video. Yeah, that's history. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the new Nikki song comes out this week. So I'm really looking forward to that. Next, we have the new Rosalia song, the new Charlie XCX Runa Sawayam song, Beg For You. Oh my God. Oh my God, like. You better be joking. When I heard that shit, I was like. You better be joking. This is so fucking great. When I heard the news, I was like, you better be joking because I'm going to combust. And I did. And the fire department was cold because I started a fire because I exploded. <laughs> yes. But basically, I love it. I love the little um, sample that they used. It's just like so excellent. I'm really looking forward to the music video. I'm just Charlie trash. I'm such Rena trash. You know, I'll stream literally anything that they release and I'll stream it into the ground. And I have done so and I will continue to do so. Next one. Shinigami Eyes, Grimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Next one that we've got here is not a new song. This is like from, I want to say 2018. It's called Sex Paranoia by Goldie But. Boutelier. I've never actually heard the artist's name said, so I don't know how to pronounce it. But this song, yeah, yeah. I would highly recommend going to listen to it. And then I got two Billy songs, the K-pop group, Flipping a Coin, and then Ring X Ring, and then Weapon, Weapon, turn, 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 turn. Paramaniac by Abby Roberts, Step Back by Girls on Top. Dreams Come True by Esper. Something in the Water by Bell's Hello, Boys World. You either get it or you don't. And lucky for me, I do. 
Let me sip this water. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be here right now because I'm dressed like a hooker and none of you like me. Yeah. We're gonna have Euphoria Discourse, we'll get to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then also some NCTU, FKA Twigs, Rebecca Black, fucking obviously. Ugh, Icon. And Gia Woods. Gia Woods has some absolute bangers. Pop girl realness. So if you want to go find a new pop girl, listen to Gia Woods. All right, next thing that we got here. House of Gucci. Number 23, House of Gucci. I recently saw House of Gucci. Uh, yeah, I have some thoughts. Balls! There was a lot going on. Um, I have positives and negatives. Let's start with the positives. Obviously, number one, Lady Gaga. She wasn't nominated for an Oscar, and that kind of pisses me off. Then again, I haven't seen any of the other movies that people got nominated for, so they could be giving the performance of the Millennium, and I'd be like, boo, where's Lady Gaga? <laughs> um, she was great. I loved the fashion. Uh, Adam Driver was good. Al Pacino was good. The shots looked nice. Like, the, the shit was looking nice, right? And that's what you want when you go to see a movie. You want visuals. And they gave the visuals. Except when they didn't. But anyway. Negatives. Jared Leto. <laughs> Zero hesitation. Um, when I saw Jared Leto on the, screen, on the screen, I thought this. Wait a minute. Hold on. You want to know what? No, I am going to leave. Why was he there? <laughs> Not even just shady. I'm like... Why? Like, he had to... Was he wearing prosthetics? He had to do, like, a body transformation for this, like, somewhat minor role. And I'm just like, what was the point? What was the reason? Clicks, views, and engagement? You didn't get any of that from me. Just annoying. And, like, the pacing was kind of weird as well. Also, like, I think one of the issues I had with Jared Leto's character in the movie... By the way, he played Paolo Gucci who was, like, the nephew of Al Pacino's character, the cousin of Adam Driver's character. And he was supposed to be this eccentric, kind of left-of-field Gucci relative that had these radical ideas and designs and stuff that didn't match the ethos or the design aesthetic of most of the best-selling Gucci stuff. So then they were like, no, get the fuck out. Um... So that was the character. Also, remember, this is based on real people. But this character was just not believable. It's just, I don't know what it was, but something about them trying to use this character to make the movie funny, make the movie light, when the situation itself wasn't light. Like, it was based on real events, and it was very dramatic, and it's very interesting. I don't know why, what the obsession is with trying to make these movies funny to appeal to the widest possible audience. That shit pissed me off, sorry to say. Like, why not lean into the more art house aspect? I feel like the movie would have been so good if they had kind of leaned into a more serious tone and gone for, like, indie, indie vibes with the movie. Because the source material is just so interesting. But, you know... I guess they did what they needed to do because they thought that's what they needed to do. But was it what it needed to be thoughts in my needs? Never. <laughs> A word from our sponsor. Pink Friday is in stores tomorrow. Give it up for Pink Friday, you guys. So that was my issue. It was trying to be funny when it shouldn't have been. Jared Leto pissed me off. Also because the Italian accents shit pissed me off. Let's get into that. Okay, so Lady Gaga's Italian, famously. So she can pull off an Italian accent, like English, speaking English with an Italian accent really well. Uh, Al Pacino fucking obviously can do that too. Then you have other characters speaking English with an Italian accent. And it's like, uh, <laughs> as an Italian, I'm just like, were there no Italians available? Were all the Italian girlies booked out? You know what I mean? Also, why was it in English? 
I get the scenes when it's in New York and they're speaking English with the Italian accent. That makes sense. Why are these girls in Milan speaking English with an Italian accent to other Italians? Again, trying to appeal to the widest audience because they don't believe that people want to read subtitles. Which I guess is somewhat true. General public is quite lazy in terms of subtitles. But the girls that get it, get it. And they'll read a subtitle. And that's what I mean by what I was saying before. We're trying to make it a more indie film in a sense that they would actually use subtitles and put it in Italian. It could have been so much better. Ugh. Missed opportunity, if you really ask me. But would I recommend it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I love Lady Gaga. That's why I would recommend it. And I like high fashion. There were some cool fashion nods in there. A little bit spoilers. I guess it's not really spoilers because it's literally history. Um, but how Tom Ford became really involved with Gucci in, I think it was late 90s, early 2000s. So you see his initial collection at Gucci, which was really interesting. But then they didn't show who was designing the clothes at the height of Gucci, right? So when all this shit's going down with the two brothers and then Adam Driver character and the nephew, they're talking about the nephew's designs being bad so they don't get included. Who's designing the actual clothes? And then it's like, oh, the brothers designed the clothes? Oh, he designed this scarf? But then who was making the clothes? Like, you didn't see any of the clothes or bags making designing process. And I think that would have been cool to see. Because that shit's interesting, right? Am I right? I need an applause sound. I live for the applause, applause. Oh, no, ho, 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 ho. Um... Damn, I don't have any, like, positive sound. Oh, yeah, no, I do. Maybe she snapped. Maybe she snapped. And I guess I consider this moment of Pretty Little Lies an extreme slay. So then by me using this sound, it counts as me talking about something and referring to it as an extreme slay. Cashmere sweaters. That moment was very cashmere sweaters. We're just rewriting the history books here. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Um... Next thing, Euphoria. I don't know if your brain is all scrambled from like all the molly you take, but I never said that. If you spread a lie like that, I will fucking come for you. Exactly, exactly. And I told her, I said, ma'am. So, end of January, I started watching Euphoria. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have some thoughts. So. The girlies just love to say this is the best show to ever exist and that the best show that will ever exist. And I understand the hype. I mean, I wouldn't have watched it all the way through if it wasn't good. That's a lie. I would have watched it all the way through. I mean, I watched all the Gossip Girl reboot. Let me mind my business. Um, I like Euphoria. I like how it's, I like how it's made. I think that is my favourite thing about it. The shots, the music, that kind of stuff. The characters, I like how they're all a little bit shit. That's fun. We love that. We love depth. The acting, fantastic. Like, it's just breathtaking to see professionals in their habitat. Uh, shout out to Zendaya. I know she's a regular listener. You're doing a great job. You're really slaying. Um, the plot? Yeah, I have some issues. I have some issues with the plot. Sometimes it's like, oh, this really important thing happens. Let's not talk about it for an entire season. Cool. And then you have things like characters popping up out of nowhere. Bit of continuity issues. But at the end of the day... I don't really care. Like, I'm still going to watch it. Because <laughs> it looks good. And the memes are so good. The memes on Twitter while the episode is happening and, like, after the episode are better than the actual show. I'm convinced. That's part of the reason why I will stop whatever I'm doing to watch the new episode as soon as it comes out because I want to be part of the discourse on Twitter because it's so funny. The memes are so good. If anything, I would recommend that people watch this show so they can be included in the memes. How's about a few laughs? 
Um, but it also has some iconic one-liners. I played a couple for you. Do I have any more? This one's the best one. You better be joking. You better be joking. My favorite characters, personally. Yeah, look, I am a Cassinator. The last few episodes have been real bad for the Cassinators. But I'm still holding out. Holding out for a hero. Shrek 2 vibes. But next episode is going to be bad for her as well. Okay. It's going to be disastrous. There's no two, like, two ways about it. This is a one-way street. But I'm still going to support. Right? I also enjoy Maddie. I love Maddie's fashion. Maddie's fashion is really cool. The fashion in the show full stop is cool. Um, that's part of the reason why I watched it. Like all those memes on TikTok and people saying, why are you not in uniform? And they get changed into something ridiculous. It's true. It's true. That's the kind of stuff they wear in the show. Um, I like the fashion. Specifically, the female character's fashion. Because the men, I don't think they're doing anything fashion-wise. It's not bad, but I'm not gagging. You know what I mean? Like, I can't think of a single thing that Nate has worn that I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Or like, who are the other male characters? Fez? Or Elliot? Oh, I do not like Elliot. Sorry to say. Nor. That's not spoilers. I'm just saying I don't like his character. I'm just like... You're kind of flopping. I'm sorry to say, like... Uh, least favourite characters? Yeah, Nate. Yeah. Um, ooh, you know who's scary? Fucking Laurie. Oh my god. That lady's got me running scared. Damn. Like when they popped up in her house, I was just like, this lady has so much money and she lives like this. Something is definitely suspicious. And the way she talks with like monotone voice, like she'll say some completely out of nowhere, scary shit in like the same tone that she'll say that she was a professional athlete. God, Rue is stronger than me because if I heard that shit, I would be doing whatever I needed to get out of that house straight away. But also Rue is a drug addict. <laughs> so maybe we should remember that. Like she wasn't just there for a little visit. Like she had business to do at Laurie's house, Casa Laurie. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see where the story's going to go. To be honest, I just want like more for Gia. Gia needs something positive. She's going through it, right? Where are the Geonators? Make some noise. Geonators make some noise. Uh, I've been seeing on Twitter that there are some Nate stands, and I'm like, how can... Uh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? God. Nasty, nasty, nasty. You're a very nasty girl. Shut your mouth, because she's been mugging you off left, right, and centre. Um, speaking of Celebrity Big Brother, I saw the, like, leaked cast for the new US season, and it had, like, Nini Leakes, Shangela, Tiffany Pollard, and I screamed, right? Of course. How can you be someone who appreciates reality TV, see that, and not scream? Like, that would be weird. I would kind of call you out on that behavior, because it's a bit suspicious. It'd be weird. Um... But then the actual cast came out and none of them are in it. And I thought, well, I guess I'm not watching that then. If one of the girls isn't in the show, then I'm not going to watch it. That's the basic summary for anything. There has to be like a lot to convince me to watch a show that one of the girls isn't in. And when I say the girls, that could mean anything. Just like art pop. My art pop could mean anything. Um... Why am I talking about that? Back to Euphoria. But yeah, the visuals. I love the visuals. <laughs> I love the train. I love the music. Shout out to Labyrinth again. I know you're a regular listener of the podcast. 
Um, but yeah, I think in terms of me list, like watching, listening and watching things over the last couple of months, that's basically what I've been watching. The Pretty Little Liars video, obviously I was watching a lot of Pretty Little Liars. Hello. So that took up most of my watching time. But also Gossip Girl reboot final six episodes of season one. They came out in between my little podcast hiatus and I watched them. It's a battle. It's a battle. And that's not me being shady. It's just a battle. And I like the fashion. I like the visuals. Again. And I'll still watch the show. But it just wasn't doing what I had hoped it would do. Right? And that's just how Sue sees it. Also, I watched All of Us Are Dead. Which is the zombie show. Korean zombie show on Netflix. I enjoyed it, yeah. I did enjoy that one. It was quite long. There's, I think, 12 episodes. Each one is an hour. And it wasn't like a 2010s teen drama hour, which is 40 minutes with ads. No, this was like 60 minutes times 12. And when I finished it, I thought this could have been done in six episodes. A little bit miniseries vibes, you know? A little bit Queen's Gambit vibes. Do that shit in six episodes. Was Queen, Queen's Gambit six episodes? Maybe it was eight or ten. Now I feel like it's ten, which takes all the value from my point away. Ignore that I said that. <sighs> Shout out to Anya Taylor-Joy, though. She gets it. She's a regular listener. She checks in on me. We're friends. Um, but yeah, this zombie show, the concept was a sleigh. Like, the kids are in the school, there's some drama, zombie outbreak happens. Yeah. Yeah. Now, interestingly, I think I could slay a zombie apocalypse. And you may laugh. But at the end of the day, you're going to be running around outside, scared, in tears, shitting on the street, in fear... Because there's zombies running at you. And you know where I'm going to be? At the supermarket. Because that's where all the girls go, right? Like the girls... At the end of the day, the dolls are the dolls. And the dolls are going to go to the supermarket. I've watched Walking Dead, okay? I've done the research. I've done the required reading. I'm prepared for this. Whoa, I just remembered someone that I used to... Can I say this? Yeah, I can say this. It's fine. Why did I just look in the corner again like my bloody manager's there? Can I say this? Are you sure? Wait, sh what should we name my fake manager? Candy. <gasps> Candy, can I say that? Yeah. Okay, guys, Candy says I can say it. Um, at my old job, one of the bosses, like very, very high up in the company, had like a bunker. Like a... a What's the term? Is it like doomsday prepper? Yeah. Had like a full on bunker or something. And it was like a, a known thing that he had that. And that he would like stock up stuff in there. That kind of spooked me. I'm not going to lie. I was like, do I need to have a bunker? Bitch, where the fuck is my bunker? I don't need a bunker. Because I'm prepared for the zombie apocalypse. Because I've done the research. As in I've listened. To, I was going to say listen to Walking Dead. Babe, no. I watched it. You don't go to the supermarket immediately because what's going to happen is, you know, the outbreak's going to get there and the girls are going to be fighting and there's going to be some deaths and there's going to be some infections. It's going to be drama. But after that initial wave and after you've worked out how to K-word the zombies, that's when you go to the supermarket. So I would kind of like stay in my apartment for like a day a day to two days, let the idiots do what they need to do to themselves. And then I would go to the supermarket. I'd be really cautious vibes and I'd try and make friends because the girls that are also in the supermarket at that time, they're the ones that are clued in. Yeah. And I'm not going to get the perishables, babe. No, 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 no. If I have time to swipe an apple, yeah, I'll swipe the apple. Right? Yeah. 
But no, I'm saying tuna. Maybe pasta, but you know that gas is going to get cut off. Not anything that requires cooking. So I'm going to get like canned beans, canned tomatoes, canned soup. You can eat that shit cold, I think. Noodles that you can eat dry. Yeah. Ooh, that just reminded me of something embarrassing that happened like 10 years ago. No, I haven't thought about this for years. Why did that just pop up in my brain? My brain just continues to set me up. Fucking hell. Okay, I just remember when I went to my friend's house for a sleepover. This is when, like, House of Cards was the thing. I think we watched season two or season three of House of Cards all in one go. And we went to sleep and woke up. The next day, my friend's dad was like, oh, God, this is so embarrassing. Okay, my friend's dad was like, I'm cooking breakfast. What do you guys want? And my friend's like, I'll have a... I have fried eggs, some bacon, some sausages, some toast. He's, it doesn't have an accent. I don't know why I'm doing that. But anyway, <laughs> like the whole thing, right? So that was the premise for this breakfast is that the whole thing's being cooked. It's all happening. The dad goes, Michael, what do you want? And I just have this thing that I just, I don't want to inconvenience anyone. And I, this used to be such a fucking problem. And I would say no all the time just because I, I felt like I was being a burden by saying yes. So I'd be like, no, I'm fine. And the dad's like, well, what are you going to eat? And I'm like, oh, I've got just some snacks in my bag. Bitch, the snacks in my bag were noodles. Like the noodles packet. God, this is so, this is traumatizing. So my friend and his dad were eating the fried eggs with the bacon and the tomatoes and the sausages and shit on the toast. And I'm... Sitting there with this pack of dry noodles, sprinkling the chicken salt over the top of it. No, that was a disaster. Ooh, yeah. Just the fact that I'd blocked that for 10 plus years and then all of a sudden, one little sentence on the podcast can bring it all flooding back. <sighs> wow. Aren't I just so glad that we're back to filming this podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll go to the um, supermarket, stock up on some non-perishables. Then the next issue is transportation. Like You can't stay in the cities when that shit happens. Did you watch Walking Dead? Why are you suggesting the city? Idiot. God. What you want is you want to be out of the city but not so far that you're in the country because you still want the possibility of people around but you don't want so many people around that if it goes south, then you're going to be in the shit, a.k.a. in the city. So I'm thinking maybe like an hour out of the city because in zombie apocalypse vibes, an hour away, that's like fucking whole nother universe, right? That's spin-off. The girls that are an hour away are basically getting a spin-off show. Because you also have to think, like, how are you getting there? You can't just pull up with your car. I don't even have a fucking car. Every second of every day, I'm saving money so I can put a deposit on an apartment. So that's why I'm like, I can't buy a car because I'm saving for the apartment. Like, So, well, then I'm kind of screwed because it's like, how am I going to get out there? I could ride my bike, bitch. That kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because if you drive a car, the zombie's going to be like, yeah, I hear that shit. So I'm just going to be like, you smell that shit? That's the car. Let's go chase it down the road. And the zombies in this Korean show, they were running. They were not walking. They had places to be. And I get that. Very much walking very fast ice latte vibes. That's the kind of vibes that these zombies were giving in this show. Um... And I support them in what they're trying to achieve by going fast, right? So then it, me being on a bike, yeah, I'm not making a lot of noise, but also I'm not going very fast and also I can't carry a lot of stuff, so that's an issue. You know what? Let me get back to you on that one. There are some issues with my zombie apocalypse plan. Let me hash those out and I'll get back to you on that one. But basically, if you assumed that I would die first in a zombie apocalypse, you're absolutely wrong. And it's embarrassing for you that you thought that. 
And mean and rude. Take it back. I'm not like these other girls that just don't know what to do in those situations. I would switch it on and get it done. I used to watch Walking Dead with my mum. Oh, you know who would slay a zombie apocalypse? My mum. Holy shit. My mum has seen every possible zombie media. You name a zombie media, my mum's got it on lock. Seen every single episode 17 times. She's a queen. Like, she would know what to do. Moral of the story is, zombie apocalypse, ask my mum what to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually such good advice. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say this episode. <laughs> I feel like I talked about that for too long. But you know what? My podcast, my rules, I do what I want. Exactly. Um, thank you for sticking around and not unsubscribing <laughs> to the podcast channel. <laughs> Maybe you did and you resubscribed. Welcome back, Bastie. Hey, Bastie. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to making more episodes of the podcast. It's actually a lot of fun. And I'm so excited to have my soundboard. Uh, keep your ears open for more episodes. And your eyes open for more YouTube videos. Stay groovy. Stay fresh. Stream Avamax. And I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out. Bye.